Hello. In this video, I'm going to cover panel regression in Stata, fixed effects, and random effects models. Panel regression is used with data that are both cross-sectional, that is, between subjects, and longitudinal in nature. That is, the data are panel data. Specifically, the data are structured such that a cross-section of cases are measured repeatedly on one or more variables. When researchers are working with this type of data, they are frequently focused on modeling predictors of variation in an outcome that has been measured over time. In some circumstances, the predictors are time varying, in others they are time invariant, that is, the values don't change over time and reflect stable characteristics um, or differences uh, in the cross-sectional cases, and in others there's a combination of time varying and time invariant predictors. So the first uh, type of model to, that I want to uh, briefly talk about is fixed effects uh, panel model. So fixed effects panel regression is generally used to model time varying predictors of the time varying outcome variable. Regression coefficients reflect the predictive relationships between the time varying predictors and the outcome, all this while controlling for differences between cases on the predictors or other characteristics. There are two general approaches available for carrying out fixed effects regression, a least squares dummy variable approach and mean deviation approach. The least squares dummy variable approach is easily accomplished in Stata by running a standard linear regression, but including the case or subject identifier in the regression model as a predictor and that uh, case identifier is treated as a factor. The xt-reg command used in conjunction with xt-set to specify the data as panel data essentially carries out the analysis using the mean deviation approach. The regression coefficients, standard errors, etc. for the focal predictors will be the same using either route. However, the latter route, the mean deviation approach, does not involve estimating regression parameters for dummy variables that reflect group membership, and that might be one appealing characteristic of that approach over the least squares dummy variable approach. So moving on, let's talk briefly about random effects panel regression. This particular approach can be used to model the relationship between time varying predictors of the outcome in the same fashion as fixed effects regression. However, the random effects approach assumes that there are between case differences in the outcome that should be reflected in the model. Between case differences on the outcome are reflected by case specific intercepts that are estimated. In these models, the variance of the intercepts is estimated as a model parameter along with the fixed effects of the predictors and the variance of the residuals. Because these models take into account between case differences on the outcome, they make it possible to incorporate characteristics that vary between cases as additional predictors of the outcome variable. Using the language of multi-level modeling, random effects models allow one to incorporate both level one, time varying, and level two, time invariant, predictors of variation in the outcome variable. In Stata, there are two options available for estimation of model parameters, that being maximum likelihood estimation and generalized least squares estimation. To carry out panel regression, you need to have your data in long as opposed to wide format. That is, each row contains data on a specific case at a particular time on your variables. This will necessitate using the reshape command if your data are in wide format prior to your analysis. And so actually I have um, this site right here is a nice little demonstration of how to do this. And before I proceed any further, let me just note too that this text file will be made available for download underneath the video description along with the data for the examples. So um, you can actually, uh, you'll be able to copy and, and paste any links that I have in this text file um, once you've downloaded it. So the data I will be analyzing, which is found at this uh, location right here, and it will also include a link underneath the video description, it comes from the 2017 and 18 college football seasons where we have team data measured across years. The outcome variable is football power index as of the end of the two seasons. This variable is one that varies over time. The time varying predictor variables are red zone scoring percentage and schedule strength. We also have two time invariant predictors, power five and stadium size, and the case identifier variable in the data set is ID. The data are organized in long or vertical format with each row representing a given year for a specific team. The values of the time varying outcome and predictors vary over the two years, whereas the values of the time invariant predictors are constants across the two years, but vary between the teams. So these are the variables in the data set right here. We have the case identifier right here, uh, team is just uh, designating the individual teams, whereas the ID variable is actually a numerical 
uh, code for team. We have stadium size and power five are um, our time invariant predictors. FPI post is our uh, dependent variable. Red zone scoring percentage and schedule strength are our time, time varying predictor variables. So before we get started analyzing our data, let's just take a quick look at it. So I'm gonna go under data uh, editor. We'll go under the browse and um, we're not changing anything here. So you can see right here, we have team, we have Air Force, Akron, Alabama, Appalachian State, and so forth. So each row represents a given year for a, uh, for a given team. So basically row one is 2017 for Air Force, row two is 2018 for Air Force, Akron 2017, 18, and so forth. You'll notice that we have, um, so our ID variable is unique to each team. And you'll notice that our dependent variable, FPI post, it uh, varies across the years um, for each team. So you can see that there's variation uh, over the years for each team, and um, that is our dependent variable right there. You can see red zone scoring percentage and schedule strength, those values uh, vary over the years within team as well. And these are actually our time varying predictor variables. Our time invariant predictors are power five, uh, which you can see for each team uh, across the years, we have the same value. So there's uh, Akron right there, there's Alabama, uh, uh, Appalachian State, and so forth. Stadium size also is a constant across the years as well. So let's go ahead and run some analyses. So I'm going to open this up and scroll down. And first off, we'll run a fixed effects regression using the least squares dummy variable approach with the regress command. So you'll notice that we have regress followed by the name of our dependent variable, FPI post. You can see that to the right, we have our predictor variables, red zone scoring percentage, schedule strength right here. And then we also have our case identifier right here with the I dot indicating that we're treating this as a factor. So I'm actually just gonna do a lot of copying and pasting from this text file into, um, into Stata, and into the command line to kind of expedite things. So I'm gonna uh, paste that in hit enter, and we'll just kind of click on more right here to get everything. So you'll notice uh, looking at this that we have regression coefficients reflecting essentially comparisons uh, between uh, the uh, individual teams and, a, and a, um, a baseline category, which is essentially the first uh, group, which is our Air Force um, group. And these are really just not particularly uh, useful or, or important. These are just, uh, but these are the regression coefficients for all those comparisons. Uh, what's mainly important is as we scroll down, you'll see that we get the regression coefficients uh, right here. These are the regression coefficients, standard errors, uh, the, the um, test statistics and p-values right here for our two focal predictor variables. And so there you go. We've now carried out our uh, regression analysis using the fixed effects dummy variable approach. Um, just kind of FYI, as you sc scroll up right here, you can see we have the R square value. Um, it's very, very high. And that's just reflecting the fact that we, um, that we have all of our group comparisons in addition to our two focal predictors. But that's the R square value. Uh, there's the adjusted R square value, there's our F value and, and uh, P value and so forth for the model. But that again is using the least squares dummy variable approach. Now another approach is the mean deviation approach and we can use the XT reg command to do this. So the first thing you have to do though is to use the XT set command uh, in order to let uh, Stata know that we're working with panel data. So I have XT set and then ID uh, indicating our, our uh, case identifier variable. So I'm gonna actually just copy this and paste it into the command line as well and hit enter. And so now uh, we're recognizing that we're working with panel data again. So next we have XT reg and then FPI post, that's our dependent variable followed by the names of our two time varying predictors. And then you'll notice that we don't have uh, ID included as a, a factor anymore. So we're only including our time varying predictors followed by a comma and then FE for fixed effects. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it into the command line as well. And there you go. So now you can see uh, just kind of as a point of comparison, um, our model using the least squares dummy variable approach. These are the regression coefficients, standard errors, test values, p-values, and then down here using the XT 
uh, uh, reg uh, command, you can see that we get the exact same values. Now, before we continue on, let me also rerun this, and let's add in a couple of time invariant predictors. So I'm going to actually just copy this and paste it into the command line and then add um, the stadium size and power 5, comma, and then FE. And what you're going to find when we hit enter is that those two variables are omitted from the model. And that's because the fixed effects model basically controls for differences between uh, the groups. So any time invariant predictors are essentially omitted from the model. So if we have a model that incorporates both time varying and our time invariant predictors, we can use a uh, random effects um, model to do this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run a random effects regression by including those uh, two additional predictors. And I'm going to also show you just really quickly that you can use maximum likelihood estimation or generalized least squares estimation. So again, we have to have our, um, our uh, Stata recognizing that we're working with panel data. So I have XT set again with ID. So I'll just kind of paste this back in here and hit enter. And um, then you can see we have XT reg. We have our dependent variable, our two time varying predictors, as well as our two time invariant predictors, comma, and then MLE for maximum likelihood estimation. So if we copy that, and we paste that into the command line and hit enter, there you go. So now we've carried out um, a random effects panel regression using maximum likelihood estimation. If we want to uh, use generalized least squares, the only difference between the two models is adding an RE at the end instead of MLE at the end. So I'll just do this again and show you really quickly that there you go. Now, obviously, I've spent a lot of time just showing you the basic commands, but if you wanted to run your analysis using the um, uh, Windows and menu system, you can just simply go up to statistics, linear models and related, and then go down to panel data. You can see that we have linear regression right here. You can see there's the FE um, uh, and so forth, and RE and so forth. So I'm going to click on that just to kind of show you. So we can uh, click on FPI post right here. Uh, our independent variables. If we want to run a fixed effects model, we can just click on fixed effects and we can add in our two time varying predictors, uh, which in this case were red zone scoring percentage and schedule strength. We still would have to uh, indicate that we're working with panel data, so we can click on panel settings right here and you can see it's already set for uh, ID right here. Um, if you wanted to in indicate a time variable, you could certainly do that. Um, index is pretty much the same thing. Um, and so if we click on OK, and then we click on, you can see right here it's already registering. And uh, in this case, then we just kind of run the analysis. So I'll just kind of do this by clicking OK, and there you go. And so in this case, you can see that we get the same information that we had above when we ran this using the uh, regress command and, and, and the uh, command uh, XT reg with FE. So all of these values are going to be exactly the same as what we had uh, down here. And then if you wanted to run instead, you wanted to run the uh, uh, random effects models, and you, over here you've got the options for uh, maximum likelihood and generalized least squares. And, um, you know, in these cases you can now add in uh, the uh, time invariant predictors like uh, power 5 and stadium size, and when you run it you get the same information as what we had before. So that pretty much concludes this demonstration, and I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.